Welcome back to an episode of Rolling About. It's the same sweatshirt, same me. It's 1.15 a.m. when I'm recording a video. My mom and dad are probably really, really angry about that. They'll probably find out when they're watching this. But we got an NASCAR content to cover, so let's rock and roll. First thing, RCR has made some crew changes to No. 3. Justin Alexander will take back the role of crew chief for Austin Dillon. Keith Rodden, who was the current crew chief, will go down to a different role for RCR. Uh, Justin Alexander has been crew chief for Austin Dillon from 2017 to 2018 to 2022 to 2020 to 2022. This is a must-need change. Hopefully, you know, make some new spark. I think this has to do, I know I was hearing Austin Dillon was getting very angry at the strategy they were going. It wasn't a good strategy. Austin Dillon was like it. I think there was some talking. This was probably more of an Austin Dillon decision. He wanted something new or Jones wanted to help him out. It's his grandson. And he wanted to make a change. Austin Dillon, I believe, was 28th in points. I was checking that out. I don't know what his top 10s or top 5s are right now. I don't think he has any of that. He needs something. But to me, in my opinion, I don't see much change from this. Maybe a little change, but to me, I've never seen consistency from Austin Dillon. He's never been super consistent. He's had sparks at times, but he's only got four wins in his entire career. He's been in the Cup Series. I think this is his 10th season, 2014 and 2024. He has, had, I believe, a Truck Series Championship and x Series Championship, but he got in the Cup Series, and then that translated to him. So, we'll see. Definitely, you know, RCR has made a lot of changes when it comes to Austin Dillon and Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch more on the pit crew, the guys that put the tires on, and now it looks like it's more of, uh, you know, up, up top of the box is what Austin Dillon needs some switching on. So we'll see how it all helps. The three car. Next thing, Adam Sturry had an article about the possibility of Stuart Haas getting rid or selling one of their charters before the 2025 season. I guess this has been rumored through a bunch of half a dozen um, trusted sources through this article as said. The team is looking for charters. It's Trackhouse 2311, also Junior Moon Sports, which makes sense what we heard. And, you know, Stuart Haas's lack in performance the last couple of years, and also they lost a lot of sponsors, probably more Kevin Hart sponsors. They're not in a great spot right now. And, and there's also talks about if Toe Stewart are, will, you know, drop out. You know, he's really focused on driving right now. And who knows? Maybe he wants to get rid of his team. I don't know. He's never said that. And like, it's not like Stuart Haas needs the money. I mean, they got a billionaire owner running the freaking team. Um, I think this, if they got, if they got rid of a charter, and I'm not saying, you know, this is just rumor. So it's actually currently, and there's no comment from Stuart Haas. I mean, Stuart Haas did get asked during the championship press conference of his driver, Cole Custer, winning the championship about it. Why are we talking about this on Saturday night when the guy has just won a championship? That's what was asked by someone from The Athletic. Yeah, I'm not sure why you're asking the you know, owner of a team about Charles. The dude is happy for his driver to win a championship. That just seems a bit stupid. But I don't know. I don't know what Sir House plan is. I think they they are running a lot better. I think you're seeing their team a lot more competitive. But these cars are all the same. So we'll see. I think if they were to sell a charter, they would get a lot of money for them. And I think that it would go to a team that could, could be really, really competitive. And right now, charters are super valuable. We don't know what this new charter deal will look like. I think most likely... It, it, the charter agreement will expand, but I don't see NASCAR adding charters. I think if you were if NASCAR were to add charters and make them really cheap, I think 2311, Trackhouse, and Junior Motorsports especially would definitely uh, want those charters. They want to race, and especially Junior Motorsports the most, I feel like. They tried you know, Junior Motorsports. I think they are, she were talking about BK Racing. He could have bought a charter from them for $2 million, $2 million and he never did it. And now the... You know, charter agreement is the pricing is e extreme because you know, Spire Motorsports bought a forty million dollar charter and live fast. I mean, that's not affordable unless you got a frick ton of money. And I think Junior Motorsports they're a really good situation with Xfinity Series, but I don't know if they got forty million dollars to go throw at a charter and then also pay for next gen car. It'd be awesome to have Junior in the sport, but I don't know. So there is in the seat. This could all just be rumors, and we see a four-car team. Also, I've missed is that there is a, it is a contract year for Stuart Haas when it comes to manufacturer. Will they will they return with Ford? It seems that they like Ford, but we know they're not giving them as much support. It seems like Stuart Haas has to do a lot of it on their own. But who knows? Can they really can they start performing well? Ford will see value in them, maybe, and re want us resign and help them. We'll see. Last thing I want to bring up is talking about cost cutting. Well. Looks like there was some media scum at like the NASCAR headquarters. I don't know where it was. Uh, Tanner Kitchen was there. A lot of other reporters. Tanner Kitchen's a young, 
up-and-coming reporter for NASCAR. Does a great job. Well, I believe the question was asked by Jordan Bianchi, but she has a clip. It's pretty much asking if team if at RFK Brad has was asked if they have been able to cut costs from not having practice. This is what Brad said. Yeah, and no, I don't see how we saved any money getting rid of practice. Um, I mean, not from a team perspective. Uh, maybe there were some savings other words in the industry that I'm not aware of, but there hasn't been a significant cost savings. It was that we've reallocated in a lot of ways to other demands, and uh, you know it, it's hard for me to understand the value proposition today to, to not have practice. So you, would you you would be in favor of expanding it to some degree? Maybe not to where the level it was at pre-COVID, but something more than the current state. Yeah, I'm more than comfortable with that. I would say I'm probably on the advocate side. So from that clip, I'm like almost smiling so hard because I just love when when NASCAR says all this stuff like, oh, the engine, the reason that we're running this horsepower is because we're going to save money. Oh, wait, Roush Yates, they said that it's doable to add horsepower, not going to make a dent in the budget. Oh, ECR engine, Bob Fisher? Yeah, we want more horsepower. It's not going to do much. We can get 750. And then David Wilson, like, yeah, we can. We can do more horsepower, it's not going to hurt much. Oh, you know, it's going to save money for teams if we have less practice. Uh, Brad Kozlowski says no. They haven't saved much cost at all from adding practice. And a lot of drivers and young drivers really need practice. Um, and Brad is a huge advocate for it. You know, him as, he's also a driver, so he would love more practice. But he's also a team owner. And now we haven't heard what other team owners are saying, so they may have a different view on it. But gosh dang, man. I feel like NASCAR is getting exposed every time they when they say something. And now it seems like it's a lie. Um, man, this is great. I'm all for more practice, more at track. If you make the weekend longer, my fans will want to camp and be at the track more. It just, to me, is a win-win situation. Give back an hour practice. You have hour practice on Friday or something, right? And then you qualify on Saturday in the race, if it's a Saturday night race, you practice on Thursday, qualify on Saturday, or you have two practices, or like, hey, you have a 20-minute practice, and then you do your qualifying session, and then you have a happy hour practice. Oh, there's just so many opportunities. I just think you should at least give an hour of practice and let these teams. Um, and also, I think you should just go back to single car qualifying. All, all let's say, all 36 cars go in order, one time, all, boom. And if you want to make it a little exciting, you need the top 10, go again. Like they did, like they total, the day total finals would qualify. That's all I'm going to say. Well, we're all, I'm all for it, man. More practice, man. This is, I like to hear that kind of stuff. Well, besides that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to subscribe, like I said before, you can. But if you don't, that's okay. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. See you next one. Goodbye.